Hi, hello, what's happening? It's your girl, Michelle M. Trey Hollis, and this is Five Star Conversations in the Sun City. Normally, I uh, have my new video up on Tuesday. However, I was under the weather and I had to put myself first. So what I hope that you can glean from this before we get into the topic, which our topic is Keith Lee exposing the Atlanta hospitality and food and hospitality scene. Um, before we get into that, I just wanted to say that this is also let this be a lesson for you too. Because look, as a restaurateur, as a an operator of a restaurant, like you're going to have your great days and then there's going to be days that are just not going to be so great. That's in every industry. Don't let that stop you from being your best every day. Every shift is a new slate. You know, and I want you to not only take that in just for yourself, but for your staff. You know, uh, the, the, the best way to create intimacy is to have a challenge that you overcome. That's in personal life, that's in professional life. You know, that's an intimacy and friendship, whatever the case may be in relationship. And so when you can foster an environment that allows for the overcoming of challenges, then you're going to have a much stronger and cohesive staff to work with. I truly do believe this. And I've seen it happen. You know, one of the things um, that that I always used to say, and it's becoming more and more apparent, is you have to have a thick skin to work in the restaurant industry. Okay. And again, we're going to talk about Keith Lee. If you've never heard of Keith Lee and you're a restaurateur and you're in the restaurant business, you need to look him up. He's a YouTuber. He's got over 14 million subscribers and he has built his following on going to mom and pop restaurants, trying their food in as unbiased of a way as possible. And, um, giving reviews and he has been able to make and create create success for so many business owners because when he came to try their food he loved it and he shared it and then next thing you know yeah i mean i've watched this phenomenon happen it's just amazing he'll do a review and then you'll go to the website of those people you'll see their numbers drive up and they're just on there like we ran out of food every day for like the next however many weeks like that's an opportunity you want someone like that to come into your establishment you know and i want to be that person here in el paso and where i am in el paso texas and i want to also be that be a person very much like keith lee to elevate and highlight the these culinary gems that we have in our communities and i want to encourage more people to go to them okay but before we get all the way into the Keith Lee, I just want to pull it really quickly back into the into your your atmosphere, because let's say that you do have an upswell of clients to come in. You want to make sure you have a team that can handle that and that you can communicate it. One of the things I always used to say is, you know, when you're working at a at a high level restaurant and you get busy, you don't have to, people don't have time for please and thank you all the time. I think that's in any industry, but I just know very well, you know, in this industry where it can feel high pressure because you're face to face with the customer that is expecting something from you. And sometimes the kitchen, you know, sometimes the, the, your great plan is not working out with what's flowing at the moment and that's okay but you have to have a thick skin because you can't expect a please and a thank you every time. Sometimes it's just like, hey, give me that. <laughs> I need that. Uh, clear my table if you're talking to the busters, you know, can you clear my table? You know, you, you might try to say please, but you might not always get a please and a thank you from the chef, from your fellow coworkers. You need to learn how to not take that personal. It's so important in this industry. And it's not just in this industry. If you go into any type of, of, uh, I was just watching something on, um, I was just watching Beyonce's mom talking about her during the tour. And there's like, she's mean in the back. No, she's not mean. She's just very direct. Maybe she is a little mean because this is high stakes. This is her name. 
You know what I mean? And that's how it's going to be. That's how your chef feels, an executive chef feels. It's how any boss that you have feels like this is their name, their job on the line every day. It's how someone who cares about what they're doing feels, who cares about giving that great experience. So don't take it personal if you're getting orders barked at you or even if you have a, if you, you know, like have you feel some type of way at some point, you know. But as a restaurateur, you need to communicate that. If you want to keep a good staff and you want to create a great culture, you're going to communicate that in times that aren't so stressful. And they say, hey, sometimes it's going to be stressful, you know, because we've got a, we have everyone that came in at once. So I'm going to need you to not, and, and if, honestly, just say this. And the right mature kind of people who have the same vision as you will get it. And they'll appreciate you for pointing that out. But the ones that don't won't, and I'm just telling you that this, this pool of workers, this next, these next up and coming generations, they simply aren't playing that ish. <laughs> they're not, they're not, they're not as strong. I hate to say it like this, but I don't want to say they're not as strong as us. Cause I think in certain situations, they are strong or they have the potential to be stronger, but you'll get a lot further by communicating with them, explaining to them the why, they'll actually respect that. And how do I know? Because I am a server and I've been a server. I've worked at many restaurants, especially these past few that I worked at. Like I've always gained the respect of my coworkers. You know, there have been a couple of restaurants where I was not in, you know, I was in my dark night of the soul journey and I love and respect them, even though we didn't end on great terms. I'm just keeping it real with you because I also know that in this industry, there are a lot of, there can be a lot of personal dramas that play out on the field. So if you're a restaurateur, if you are a, an, uh, an operator, if you're a general manager, being in tune and in key with your people is going to be major key. You know, and something that I want to do that's important to me is to have support for people that may have drug and alcohol um, issues in this field, because a lot of times they're great people, but it's just the things that are going on in their life. And that's like a big vision of mine past just supporting you as a restaurateur to create your culture, but making that, making a healthy lifestyle be something that's integral in the culture as well without the shame. You know, so um, and having those honest conversations is important. I digress. So back to Keith Lee. Now that we've got that straightened out, that the first segment was culture. <clears throat> Pardon me. Very important. Now, Keith Lee. It, it, and it bleeds into this because Keith Lee, it's all over. It's all over the news. It's on CNN. It's on Stone, Rolling Stone. Like this is huge news today. <laughs> It's huge news today, and it's so great because I'm going to uh, one of my one of the restaurants that I work with and the brands that I work with. I love them so much; they're so great. And I'm going to have this conversation with them today, and you should have a similar conversation with your staff. You never know when a Keith Lee is coming into your restaurant. You may not know that person. Look, you don't know every TikToker that's huge. You could watch TikTok all day long, and you don't know how many people in your own backyard have 70, 50, 100,000, millions of followers. You want to be the person that offers the best service. It doesn't mean that you're not human. It doesn't mean that we're not going to make mistakes sometimes. But what it does mean is that you care enough to be of resolve. Now, if you are a person and you create a culture where we resolve issues, where you don't have to feel intimidated to have made a mistake. Come tell me about, we don't want the mistakes to be regular. Obviously, if these mistakes seem to happen a lot and you're not getting something, then we need to coach you on that or you potentially may not be a good fit. Let's be one thou. But mostly, we want to resolve any issues that we had that come up. And we you want to have a management team and an environment that fosters people correcting mistakes right away, especially in the food industry. Because if your team is afraid to admit that they made a mistake, 
that can cause an even bigger mistake. And then if your person, if your server is not communicating with the table because they feel bad, like those are all bad plans. Much better for you to admit a mistake right away, communicate with the table. Look, I say 95% of people are reasonable. You're going to have a 5% that's not. And we as management, you, you know, we as leaders, we have to recognize that someone did the best they could and made a mistake. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to be upset sometimes, but you have, you want to create an environment where mistakes are brought to you because if they're not, you're, you have staff that's making mistakes. They're not saying anything to you and they're letting that customer leave without resolving that issue. How do you think that? is working for you, it's not. And I can guarantee you, if your staff doesn't feel comfortable to come to you with a mistake, that's happening more than you would like, okay? And so, for instance, so Keith Lee, he goes to Atlanta, he goes and tries to get food at a couple different places. Now, here's where it's, what's interesting, because as I read the information uh, for online, I, I kind of, I kind of uh, had to disagree a little bit with, I mean, just based on what I saw in the CNN article. Let me just, let me look it up real quick. It's just saying that he went, let me see here. Um, he said he, he sent his family into a restaurant and they were told there was no carry out on the weekends and it would be a wait of more than an hour. But then when Lee added, when Lee went inside, when they saw it was him, then they were told they could be seated right away. And that he had a problem with that. Now, again, I haven't looked at the whole situation. So, you know, there's probably more to the story. That situation I think is unfair. I feel like if it was a weekend, it was busy. They don't do carry out. And then he came in and they were going to make a seat for him. Of course they were going to. It's Keith Lee. And if they were busy and they were going to have to wait longer than an hour, they were only being real. So if anything, the only thing that they made a mistake on was letting him jump the line in an hour. So, you know, you still have to be careful what you, with what is presented, but that's the point. The point is, is that Everything that happens in your restaurant is being, you know, has the possibility of being recorded and working for you or against you in this in this digital age. So you want to make sure that you have a clean environment. You want to make sure that everyone's working together, that teamwork is a very big, there's a big emphasis on teamwork. Most of the time, your staff are, they're outgoing anyways. Most of the time, I have found that there's a lot of theater, a lot of musicians, a lot of people in this industry. So work to use that in your advantage and help people see, help your, your team see that this is an opportunity for them to shine, for you to get, uh, you know, get more impressions out there, make an impression that it can help their individual person and it can also and will help the establishment and everybody wins with that being in mind. So again, this goes back to culture and culture fit does make a difference. You know, if somebody, if people care about that, then, you know, if that is important to your restaurant, if your restaurant somewhere that's probably going to be on social media, on people's social media a lot, and that's how you want to promote it and build it, beautiful. I love that for you. Make sure that you're hiring people that care about that stuff. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> because if they don't, then you're going to have a harder time uh, getting them to care about that stuff, you know? But if they, you want to, you want to hire people that want to work, that want more business, that want to work hard, you know, these are all, um, qualities that you should be looking for and people that you're hiring, you should be vetting and verifying on a periodic basis to make sure that everyone's on the same page. And as long as that is important to, as long as making a lot of money and 
being in the spotlight is important to who you're working with and you're going to do well and they're going to do well but they have to want to be in the spotlight if they don't want to be in the spotlight you shouldn't really be a server because you are really putting on a show i mean it really is and the better you get at that the more money that you have potential that you have to make and so and you should want it to be busy. You know what I'm saying? So, the you know this is kind of leaking into another subject. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. I'm still gonna do part two of uh, part two of why you should run your restaurant like a tech startup because that's so real. And then the other is another part two that I needed to do still. And listen, I'm just you know I'm just getting started. Here we see creating your restaurant's um, vision and mission statement. We're going to go back into that too, because uh, this is all important. You know, this comes back to it. If your vision and mission statement is to be the number one visited restaurant in your city, if it's to get the most impressions on social media, like you can have fun with this, have fun with your restaurant and growing it, you know, um, but just make sure you have ways to capture data that you have, that you have forward thinking ways to bring more business in, that you're not just doing the same old thing, expecting different results, that you have a team that can handle the influx because there's no worse publicity like bad service. So all of these things get to be considered. That being said, Stay tuned. We're going to have more. I can tell. I'm sure you can tell that I am feeling better. Um, and let this be a lesson to you that, hey, you may not be feeling great for a few days or whatever. Take that rest, but then get back to it when you feel better. You, there's nothing that makes you feel, there's nothing that makes you more appreciative of the day and how did you can seize the day than by being sick for a few days. It really makes you really value your health. So make sure that you take care of your mental health and that you do things strategically. You don't have to, to uh, you know, there's easier ways to do things. And I'm hope, hoping that this can help you to do that and to see that. And feel free to reach out to me. You can always email me. Uh, you can DM me on um, Instagram uh, at michelle.instar5. Uh, follow me there. And you can also uh, DM me there as well. And I will be happy to have a chat with you if I can help you to pull your culture in, dial it in, and, um, you know, let's get it rocking. Peace and blessings. See ya. Uh, this is Michelle M. Trey Hollis signing off five-star conversations in the Sun City. Peace and blessings.